Hey everybody, got another video here for you. This is going to be a how-to, not really a demonstration, just a how-to of how to do these new rounded fret ends on, on uh, guitar necks that have already been fretted. I just discovered this new method and it's got me the best results I've ever gotten. Um, I'm going to shoot some separate high resolution footage just like I'm you know a 30 second pass or something to see if I can what's the best thing that this phone can capture as far as like the quality of the results but as you can see it's pretty impressive I don't know how close I can get before this thing breaks up. If I go real, real slow. Yeah, you get the idea. So, so like I said, I'm not really going to necessarily demonstrate. I don't know if I get real motivated, I might pause the video and dig up a neck that needs some work, but but this is the, what the final result looks like. This is the uh, X11 version 2.0, and uh, this video basically I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you how to do it, even though I won't necessarily show you how to do it. So. So, let's see, so you're building a neck and, you know, at some point in the process you're going to slot it, like these guys, and you're going to be, oh, hold on, just dropped a tool. Okay, yeah, so you're going to be using like one of these guys here, fret slotting saw, and, you know, there's lots of videos out there on how to do it. And you're going to end up with something like this. These actually are not real good examples. Um, this one is a CNC routed one. And as you can see, it doesn't go all the way to the end. So I have the opportunity to do the hemispherical grinder thing. Not that I have the bit or anything. but Now this one here, what they did is they slotted it in a normal fashion. And then they backfilled the ends with... Uh, wood glue and sawdust. It doesn't quite color match. It might be CA glue and sawdust because of the lack of color match. But um, but you get the same basic effect as this without the CNC machine. So that's kind of cool too. But in general, yeah. So you're going to have a fretboard. You're going to be slotting it at some point probably with something like that. And then you're going to be taking your fret wire and you're going to be cutting it to length. You're going to be, you know, setting it the right radius and stuff first. But you'll be cutting it to length and then you'll be installing your frets using... I just laid out all the tools for doing all this stuff. Installing your frets using this kind of thing and maybe a little of this stuff. That's Starbond medium. Um, CA glue. Uh, or, you know, you might use a press, you know, there's, there's, like most things in building guitars, there's a couple different ways to skin a cat, and, and most of them work okay, so, and, and there's some things you gotta do in order, you know, you gotta cut slots before you can put the frets in, but other things, it's like, you know, you can, you can glue up a fretboard in a blank, and then slot it, or you can slot the fretboard and then glue it up or you know carve first or carve second it's probably easiest to carve after it's all been worked on when you want it to be flat but but yeah there's you know there's different approaches that can be used some are more efficient than others obviously so so you you got your fret ends frets installed using your hammer or your press or whatever and uh and then you go along and you nip them off, um, word up, nippers this small, they don't really work too good, get something bigger and beefier. Um, 
And then, you know, you give it your basic beveling with this kind of a tool here. This is a front end beveling file, and you just until you get it down to the edge of the fretboard. And and then you're gonna come in and the typical approach is to take one of these guys, uh, a notch straight edge, and your good old trusty truss rod adapt adjustment wrench and set the the finger the fretboard flat. But really, what you're, you're not really worried about the wood. You're worried about the top of the frets. So, the top of the frets is what I like to call the fret plane. And if you see this ruler here, this ruler right here is more or less defining the fret plane on this guitar right now. And if you wiggle it, you can see that it's got... Just a hair of relief in the middle now that it's under full tension. And this thing was pretty much flat before I put it under full tension. So it's got just a hair of relief and it's set nice and low. Like, like what? Right, actually, no, this is set a little on the high side, about 1.7 mil action, as I recall. Right now it's set a little on the high side, so. But um, what it was is that I was lazy and kind of, and kind of got the neck straight and assumed that the frets would be level enough. And 13 is just, just a little bit troublesome high. And so I, and instead of just, really I should have just leveled everything from 13 up. But I was lazy so I just raise the action half a mil. <laughs> no, sorry. I raised the action two tenths of a mil and that's all it took. Yeah, so so yeah, I need to go back and put the whammy on it and give it a proper leveling and then I can drop the action down probably another half mil down to like 1.2 or something on this thing because these guitars are God is in the details and it's all about super accuracy and tenths of a mil in order to get things super, super perfect correct. When you're talking like distance to the edge of the fretboard, string spacing, action height, relief, nut slot height, pickup height, saddle height, all these dimensions that are all just like super, super critical to the performance of the instrument. It's, it's really amazing how much of a little difference can make in, in perfect versus far from perfect. So, yeah. So, yeah, God's in the details. And what I'm going to be describing here is a definitely laborious God details kind of a procedure. So, you... So... So like I was saying, the normal approach is you come in with this guy here and you adjust your fingerboard flat and then you grind everything down level. But really, you don't care about the wood, you care about the metal. You care about the tops of the frets. So my personal preference is to use just the, a notch straight edge in order to set the fret plane the tops of the frets as flat as possible wherever that is. I don't care where the wood is. I care where the tops of the frets are. And that's that's what matters. It doesn't matter really where the wood is as long as it's out of the way. And uh, and and then from there then you level. And that way you don't have to you might take off less material. Cause, you know, it, it could you might, if you if you do it the other way, if you do it this way with a notch, then you notch and then you level, and you're pretty much guaranteed that everything's going to be A level and B more or less the same distance from the top of the fingerboard. It might all slope a little this way or all slope a little that way, but 
but it's going to be pretty close probably. If you if you just worry about the tops of the frets, you might take off less material. The fretboard can go like this for all you care, and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You're taking the least possible amount of material off the fretboard. You're achieving the same results, a flat fret plane, and you're not worrying about the wood. And you don't need a special tool, and you don't need to make one. So, yeah. Goodbye. Yeah, I don't, I don't really use these anymore. So, so you've got your fret plane flat, and then you come in with like one of these guys, and, and your Sharpie, and your tape, and you know the drill, you mark it out, and you level it, and then you come in, and you mark them again, and you crown it with whatever your crowning weapon of choice is. And that's the next step is the new technique. So, first thing you do is you tape yourself off, okay? Because you don't want to leave any rub marks on the fingerboard. Second thing you do is you come in with your file, get the shiny thing out of the way. You want to come with the flat side down of your fret in dressing file and you're going to do just the same way that you nip these bottoms here you're going to do the same idea but you're going to go ahead and you're going to go ahead and round the entire bottom and it's hard to see what's going on you can tell your progress by by feeling the the file cutting by hearing the file cutting by feeling the vibration in the neck as you're holding it as the file's cutting and also by the shavings that you'll get on the tape. And that's how you can tell if you're making progress. If you want to practice on one first, what you can do is you can come in with this guy like this and do the top first. The normal, the normal order is you use the fret and dressing file to do the bottom. Then you use the Gerard or Grand or I forget the exact name quarter round file in order to get kind of like a third of the way up from the bottom or just above the bottom to about halfway up kind of a thing or two thirds the way up the side let's say and then and then you come in with this guy and that gets the top and the result is a is a hemisphere more or less and uh but you can't because of the fact that you're working from the bottom to the top, you're almost kind of like undercutting this bottom, and you can't really see what's going on. And so if you want, what you can do is, for like one, just to get the hang of it, you can do the top first, and then come in with the bottom. And then it makes it much easier to see what's going on. But anyway, what you do is you come in, you round it with the bottom, then you round it with the quarter round, and that gets the sides. I'm going to draw a little diagram in a second. And then you come over just this way with, uh, with the rounding file. You might kick it just ever so slightly left and right. And once again, you're going by the, the vibration in the neck, the vibration in the file, and the sound to feel when you're cutting. And you don't want to get down any lower than you have to or else you'll leave marks. And you don't want to get up any higher than you have to or else you're going to start taking the tops off. And you just do that. It takes time because you're using like three files on the end of each fret. And you've got 48 fret ends to deal with. Plus either taping the whole thing up and using a bunch of tape. Or when I did this guitar, I actually did it over the course of like three days part time. Just, just rolling the fret ends. Just doing the fret ends. And I'd, I'd take a wide piece of tape and I'd like move it from fret to fret. And then I could also take a wide piece of tape and tear it in half and, and do like, you know, a pair of frets. And you could actually like get like free, three frets when filing and two frets when polishing out of one piece of tape and save a lot of tape that way. But as far as like doing it fast... I think the fastest way is just going to be to tape up the whole darn neck all at once, 
and then you just hit up like like the base side all the tops with this and then you flip it around and do all the other side and then flip it around and that kind of thing so that you're doing assembly line you do all the all the left side of the base and then you do you know all the left side of the treble with this file and then you flip around whatever's best for you and you do all the right side of the bass and the right side of the treble. I think I was doing them holding the guitar like this way for one direction and this way to do the the other side of the fret ends kind of a thing. And of course when you're using these you want to use the flat side down on the fret end dressing file, like you're nipping the bottoms, and you need to keep the flat end flat against the fingerboard. And the grand or grard, however it is spelled, I forget, it works the same kind of way. Basically, it's half of a, of a concave crowning file, and it's got a flat side, and, and, then, the, and then the quarter round ground in it. And you want to keep the flat side down, and you just come around this way. And on both of these files, you have the same issue of, as you're coming around, you've got to lift it slightly to, to get it over the fret next to it. And that's, that's life. That's part of the reason why I want to tape things up real good to leave no rub marks in it whatsoever here. So, and then finally you come in with this guy and you start, you know, wherever it wants to start, feel like it's cutting and then only go down as far as it does cut and just a few times this way and just maybe five, 10, 20 degrees this left and right. You don't even have to go 30. It doesn't take much. Just listen and feel for where it's cutting. That's important. And what you'll do is you'll, you'll be going and at first it'll, where it's really cutting, it's really noticeable and then it starts to smooth out and it makes less noise and, be, and doesn't vibrate as much. And that's when you want to stop. And then, you know, hit it to, on a little tilt just to see if you're getting any of that really rough cutting. And, and it'll go away super, super quick if you are. And you're all done. It, it doesn't take much at all. It's just the fact that, you know, you're spending, I don't know, 20, 30 seconds with each file. So... So, yeah, it adds up. It adds up. Um, even if you're taping the whole thing off and trying to do it mass production style, you're probably looking at two hours just to, just to round and round the fret ends and roll the fretboard edges. Cause once you do these three files, then the next step is, is you come in with like some 320 and you just go like this. Oh wait, hold on. Did I say the first step? Hold on. Very first step. Before the files. You come in with this guy again and you're gonna bevel things down until you get a until you get like a half mil chamfer here. Then you go ahead and you do your three files and you round everything. You tape it up and you round everything. Then once you've done that then you need to untape the edge if it's taped and you need to roll the edge with like some 320 maybe go 320 n6 but i don't think the six is really necessary because of the step that follows which is where you get this stuff which is your basic red rouge this one is in a paste but you can also get it in like a crayon kind of a consistency or of course there's you know the red rouge buffer wheel thingies and it's all basically the same stuff if you get some like like the polishing compound that i use on clear coats um it's just a very very small amount of that in like a in like a white polish kind of a thing um Hold on. Yeah, this is the polishing compound. This is Turtle Wax Clean Finish Polishing Compound, and it's a 
it's a white polished paste but the active ingredient is a very small amount of this kind of stuff mixed into it because you can you can tell they leave the same residue so once you once you so what you do is you use this stuff and you use get my fingers out of the way and you use this guy right here and these guys have been around for a week and and I've been you know doing more work on the guitar and stuff and I haven't cleaned it up at all when I would before I shot these videos or anything you know most most builders will go ahead and 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 clean up their guitars once before they do the final shooting but I don't worry about that I'm just you know just for fun so so yeah so I hit it with this and the stuff was just like you know mirror chrome shine just incredibly cool if you look at like I mean the the ends are well actually I guess all of it is kind of shiny but the stuff was even more mirrory before it, just, it might just be the light but this is a rather smoky environment too, so smoky and dusty and dirty and such, but but anyway, so yeah, so so you hit it up with this, and this seems to be the best results and fastest method for polishing frets that I've seen, because before this I was using uh, uh, fret erasers, and they were yielding good results, and I've done, you know, all the usual suspects, the steel wool and and other things, micro mesh and nothing can touch this and that kind of stuff. So and you know, a metal polish is gonna be roughly equivalent if you get like one of those metal paste polish things in a tube. So then That's pretty much the end of the special part is the is first you chamfer with the beveling block, then you round with the files, then you roll with the sandpaper, then you polish with the compound and dremel. And that's the special process for the frets. And then it's back to the normal routine of you're going to clean it with naphtha and then you're going to oil it up with some mineral oil or, you know, some name brand stuff that's basically this with some scents in it, some fragrance kind of thing. So unless you're getting Fret Doctor, Fret Doctor is different. Fret Doctor is uh, rare essential oils, and you get a, a little bottle like this, and it costs like $10, and it'll do like half a dozen guitars. And it's cool stuff. I used to use it, but I can get just as good results with mineral oil. And I think this stuff is like, you know, 25 bucks a gallon, something like that. It's pretty cheap, so yeah. So, yeah, there you go. I mean, with me, what I've been doing for all these, like, guitar chemicals and finishes and, and stuff like that is I've been trying to figure out what the active ingredients are, and then I just buy the active ingredient. You know, I'll just buy mineral oil. I'll just buy naphtha. I'll just buy, you know, whatever chemical and, and be done with it and forget about getting the name brand with the extra junk mixed in that you don't want anyway and things like that so and you know I'm paying bulk food prices and getting great deals you know I can buy linseed oil by the gallon for like 35 bucks there's probably enough linseed to do 100 200 guitars right there so that kind of thing and this here a gallon of mineral oil that'll do 100 guitars easily you know 100 That'll do probably 200 coats of on a fretboard, and I only do like maybe three coats on a on a brand new fretboard, like something like this, which is never had a drop of anything on it in its whole entire life. 
other than what might have leaked out of the CNC machine a little bit, but yeah, so um, yeah, something like this might get might get a good slathering with uh, mineral oil, and then left to dry overnight, and then it'd get that you know like three coats of mineral oil with a six hour dry time kind of a thing, and it look like this. And this is, I believe this was uh, three coats and then, and then it was rubbed back because it, it, it had actually not hit saturation at that point and could have possibly taken a fourth, could have taken a fourth coat and maybe even more, but I stopped at three on this neck. So it was looking plenty, plenty good at that point, so. You know, it's it's got nice coloration and everything. It's got a rich tone to it. And it's nicely old. It doesn't look tried out or anything like that. So, like I said, I'm going to see what I can do about kicking this camera on this phone up to high res. Because I've got it filming at low res. And then I'm also going to... And then also, normally all of my builds, I run through a video conversion software first so that so that they're cut down to like 480p in order to cut the upload size but I'm going to shoot a high def version just like you know 30 seconds of footage with these thread ends so that you can get an idea of what what's really going on here at least as best as possible I don't know what kind of justice this camera is going to do to the thing, but we'll see. Um, yeah, I think that's going to cover it for this one. So, okay, the secret weapon out of all this really is this file. Uh, lowest price online is at Stu Mac for sixty-seven plus shipping. I can get real good results without it but I can't match the results that I get with it. And that's basically where you're at. And I plan to do this on every build going forward. I think I can get it down to two hours a neck, just dressing fret ends and rolling fretboard edges. Two hours a neck. Yeah. Definitely time intensive process here. So, and I'm saying I can get it down to my original attempt. I probably I probably spent 12 hours on this neck, just rounding fret ends and rolling fretboard edges. I you know kind of piddle away at it for four hours a day for about three hours straight for three days straight kind of a thing, and then the neck was done, and all the Fret ends were rounded and filed, even the nut, and I rolled it, and it was all chamfered and beveled, and the whole nine yards, and oiled, and everything, yeah. Yeah, I, I probably put, but you see, I was also experimenting with what order to use the files in, and all that kind of stuff, and, and so, it might have been less time. But yeah, it's definitely, I don't see it under two hours for one neck, a 24 fret, a little less for 21, but that's the kind of thing you're looking at. The other option is, of course, you know, you make or get something like this, and then you can cut your frets to length, use some preferred method to to round the fret ends. You, you have to nip the tangs at the ends and then round the fret ends before you install, and uh, apparently the real trick there is 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 getting the frets the proper, the exact proper length. Once you, because you know you got to cut them, they got to be they got to be more or less done and perfect before they go in. So you might end up making. If you get a fret too short or something, then you're going to have to end up, basically, you got to make another fret for it. But 
Hey, God is in the details. Rome wasn't built in a day, and sometimes you gotta break a few eggs to make a real mayonnaise. I learned these things when I was building my Chevelle hot rod. If you would call a 688 horsepower street convertible a hot rod, it's uh yeah, I was I was trying to see if I could match a like a an import supercar like a Lamborghini or something with uh American bolt on hot rod parts and I I came pretty close. Six eighty eight horsepower on pump gas, but but anyway I digress. Yeah, so so this is the process and this is the secret weapon here. If you've got oh wait, hold on. Let me get a pen and paper. I was gonna draw a picture. Picture's worth a thousand words. Okay, so here's what you got going on. Multicolor Sharpies. Get a set, they're great for doing this kind of thing. Make that go right away. You can get them like I think this thing was like 19 bucks at Walmart. It's got all kinds of colors in it. I can match almost any guitar I've got here. And I've got, you know, 60, 70 guitars, so. Um, right, so here's what's going on. You got your fingerboard. And you got your fret. Actually, let's try again. That's not a very good thread, is it? So you got your finger ward. And you got your fret. And it's almost hemispherical except for the very top here. On that end, right? But then over here, it's kind of like, kind of like this. The end of the fret is. So what you want to do is, and the normal approach is you come in with a fret end file and you file in this area with the bottom, with the flat part, and then you use the rounded part and you kind of round all this stuff. Yeah, that actually should be flatter, shouldn't it? Because it's just been beveled off. It hasn't really been rounded yet. So, so the way this works is you come in with this guy and you're going to be getting down in this region and that rounds off this part in here and then you're going to be coming in with this guy here if in the, it'll focus it's basically half of one of these guys. Let's see if we can get them side by side here. Kind of a thing. Yeah. Yeah, so that's a half round and that's a quarter round. And as you can see, if you took this thing and kind of cut it in half lengthwise like this, you'd end up with this. So you come in with this thing like this, and that takes out like this section here. This green stuff. Yeah, so this is going to, this red one's the, uh, that's your thread end dressing file. That's a quarter round file. And then you come in with this guy across the top and it gets everybody else. And that's the way it works. Yeah. 
And you wouldn't think that little green part by the quarter round file or that critical, but it makes a difference between round and not round, really. It's the part that, oops. It's the part that, is this thing still right side up? Yeah, it's the part that neither this file nor this file can get very well. If you use the fret in dressing file with the round in down and do a whole lot of round stuff, you could probably do it. But it'd probably take even longer than this method. And if you've got, you know, if you're going to be doing, if you're going to be dressing some fret ends, man, I mean, all the rest of these files are like, you know, this is like maybe $20, and this is maybe $10, so. Drop, so, drop you know, I think this thing is like $70, $80 with tax and shipping, so. Drop a few bucks, get a real file, and, and step your game up. That's all I got to say. So, until the next one, everybody, have a good one. See y'all later. Come on, thing.